Hello, I'm uh, Howard Park and this is Lisa Maselli. Uh, we teach uh, a plein air painting class called uh, Oil and Water, whereby we do watercolor and oil painting, showing very much the same scene, picking the same scene, and seeing how each one of us approach it so that our students have a chance of seeing how to create a piece of artwork, not be a slave to a particular type of medium, but be able to uh, find uh, joy in whatever it is that uh, medium they decide to pursue. All right, so we uh, we obviously are doing an oil painting and a watercolor painting, so there's a difference, but we're going to attempt the same scene. So, so yeah. I prefer to use a softer pencil with the watercolor paper because I can erase it more easily. It doesn't indent into the paper, so it just gives me a little bit more freedom. I do a lot of erasing and, you know, changing my marks because I don't have the ability like Howard does to be able to, to go back in and, and make some changes after after the fact. I really have to have my sketch pretty well worked out. So a bug just landed on my painting and got into my eraser. Perfect. So, Send them over here, we'll get them stuck in the paint <laughs> and then they'll know I painted this outside. So th these are the some of the some of the pitfalls and glories of plein air painting. So Henry said that you could paint anything, any color, as long as you had the value right. and. He made a reference to you could paint red trees, you could paint, you could paint uh, bluegrass, as long as the value was correct. So value to me is a really intricate and an important part of my painting. And part of the way for me to achieve that is to lift out some of the paint that I put down so that the darks come forward, which is what happens with values in general. They become more chromatic and they come forward. So there are still maybe some details that have to be worked out as far as as the final shapes of some of these. But right now I'm just looking right for that right for that value change, finding that interest. And now I'm gonna one more time go back in and find these darks. In the meantime, Lisa is doing a fair amount of drawing Right, and I, yeah, because I really think in terms of large shapes and values when I'm doing my drawing. And so thinking about those background trees, not as all these individual trees, but really as the larger shapes. And this can really help students who are starting out and feel like, oh, I don't really know how to draw. Well, really think of everything in terms of the larger shapes. And don't worry so much about the detail. And so I try to work in a more abstract, you could say, sort of, abstract impressionism where I'm not working out every detail but I am trying to really show the contrast the value changes the points of interest in the scene and, and this and the sky is such an absolutely critical part of your painting because it will establish the source of light and it also really kind of establishes the tone of the painting exactly and you know is it a moody day is it is it a sunny bright day what's happening with the clouds and that's something we do right away is to get our sky done that's the light source no matter what even at night the sky is always the light so that that's our light source very important to set it up that way so you might think we're spending an awful lot of time with the sky but it really is an important part of the painting absolutely and it will, you know, it will, it will pay off because it will set the tone for your painting. And also, as I talked about, be an important compositional element in keeping that viewer in the painting. So what I'm doing now is working on this, um, this set of trees over here, which is kind of a big jumble mass of trunks and branches and etc. And I'm not going to paint every trunk and every branch. I'm trying to um really get the the feeling of what it is to look at that those trees without overdoing it and those are lovely they're just they're so thrown back they're gray the the ground underneath them is lit up you can see the rocks and the ledges that are underneath there that you didn't see earlier today but the beauty is that it's it's kind of lit up and it's pushed back and if you put every 
trunk, if you put every tree branch, you would destroy the painting. You would lose, you would lose all of that uh, uh, sense of distance. Um, and, and it's tempting to do that. But if you do it, you will lose that distance that you create atmospherically with your, with your color by tinting out your color. So now I'm coming into my, my foreground grasses, marsh grasses, and I'm, I'm really amping it up with some really warm colors here. And, um, and again, I don't squeeze any of these colors right out of the tube. I'm mixing all of them and really trying to get that sense of the warmth of this field. You're, you know, this is where you're pushing it. This is where you're making those kind of decisions that will add it, make, that really make it your own painting, that make, add some additional interest to it. That's right. Right? That's right. And, you know, oftentimes the light will have changed at this point, and so you really are using your artistic license. You're and your and and the the experience you've had. So you can't think of just going out making a painting without having practice at painting in the past. Right. Right. And every painting leads to the next painting. Oh, that's that's that's, that's, that's that. a really important statement. Absolutely. I had a friend, he would be so anxious and angry about what he had done that he would tear up his paintings and throw them away. And he never had the reference, nor, nor did it give him that, that wonderful uh, excitement that happens after you look back after, after a year of painting and you see the first painting you did at a, at a certain place or what excited you at first, and then the last one you did and see the improvement you made. And right. you will make an improvement. You will make that improvement. And, and the thing that we always also like to look at is how we, painting together, saw color differently and how we saw it similarly when we, when we look at the final, the final product of our painting.